This episode of MarbleCast is brought to you by the Dark Athletics Spreadshirt Shop. Now, everyone can make it nice with their own Dark Athletics gear. Our online shop is filled with dozens of unique designs for both men and women. Everything from tank tops to hoodies and so much more. You can also customize your own shirt by adding text or graphics. So check out the link in the description and get your swag today. Hey guys, we have a special guest on the MarbleCast today, Ron Yellen owner and head coach of Greenpoint Athletics in Brooklyn, New York. Ron is a great coach and athlete, both in CrossFit and weightlifting, and has a ton of experience in the industry. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Let's check it out. Awesome. All right, welcome back to another Marble Cast. Today, I am joined by a special guest, Ron Yellen, head coach and owner of CrossFit Greenpoint, or Greenpoint uh, Athletics now. Yeah, technically, technically, I never haven't changed the name yet. Um, but I still have the CrossFit Greenpoint on the wall. But uh, Greenpoint Athletics. Nice. So over the summer, when all that stuff hit, uh, did, are you guys keeping the CrossFit uh, affiliate, or are you dropping it completely? You know, I've been, I've actually been talking to uh, CrossFit right now about it. Um, if it was the same affiliate dues i would have dropped the name given that they are going to be giving the affiliates a discount they're giving i don't don't know what if they've done it for all the all the the crossfits in new york city but they've offered me 50 percent off um so i I am going to take it just because i don't want to give up the name um whether i rebrand or not it's a different story um so I don't necessarily know if I'm going to run with the name still or I'm going to keep Greenpoint Athletics and just kind of hold on to the name. So I haven't really decided quite yet. I kind of want to see how things go uh, with the new CEO for the next year or two and, and see how he kind of moves the brand. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I didn't know they were giving out discounts, man. I should have emailed them too. <laughs> yeah, they offered me right away. So. Oh, my God. Well, I yeah. guess that's the benefit of being in New York and not New Jersey. Nobody cares about anybody. So. We do. Yeah. How long have you guys been in business? Yeah. Say it again. I said I don't know if I should have said anything. Maybe they'll get uh, they'll get upset with me. That's but it. I'm gonna it. contact them right now after we're done with this podcast. Yeah, not do it. How long have uh, you guys been in business? So we just had uh, this past November was our eight, eighth year open. That's awesome, man. Eight. Congrats. Eight years, yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah, man. Uh, we met a while ago. Probably the first time we sort of met was at uh, the 2012 12.1 and CrossFit South Brooklyn. That's right. At that open. And everybody was staring at you because you had your shirt off. And you with your shirt off, you are a jacked son of a gun. Oh, my uh-huh. God. Muscles everywhere. And it was uh, me, Dave, and uh, uh, Joe and our friend Tom. We we're all out there. Yeah. We're staring at you. We're like, Dave, that's your competition. You got to beat that guy. Yeah. And uh, that that was the first time we met. That was a fun uh, fun event at CrossFit South Brooklyn. Yeah, I remember just looking at Dave and being like, "Who the hell is this guy? Yeah. And why is he so damn good?" Yeah, yeah that was kind of my the start of my relationship with him as well. So. Yeah, and you guys still stay in touch? We talk every now and then, um, but not as much as we used to. Yeah, everything's sort of changed, and we're yeah. all dads now. It's just been kind of upside down. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, so, what? How did you get started in CrossFit and weightlifting? Um, First of all, you can say how, uh, what you've done within CrossFit and uh, weightlifting, because you have some pretty good. You have a pretty good career and background. Yeah, I said, you know, I um, I think I started CrossFit like you know the story is pretty pretty similar. I had a a buddy of my friend. His name is uh. Dan Goldberg, he's the owner of CrossFit Syracuse, and, and he's been to regionals. Uh, I think he's placed quite well in a lot of them for many, many years. And I remember it was 2008, and he messaged me, and he's like, Ron, you got to try this workout out and uh, this CrossFit stuff. And I kind of just dismissed him. And then finally, a few months later, I was a trainer at Equinox, and then I just decided to give it a shot. And I'm like, oh, man, this is great. I'm hooked. And uh, I left Equinox, and I started coaching – uh, I got my level one. I started coaching. Actually, my first job was in California. I moved out to California for a few months after college, and I worked at CrossFit Balboa and CrossFit um, 
CrossFit Huntington Beach. I don't know if they've rebranded. No, CrossFit Costa Mesa. Sorry. Um, so those two gyms. And then John Wellborn was the uh, owner of CrossFit Balboa. And then Max Mormont, who is a national level weightlifter, also worked there and kind of started getting into it. And then I came back to New York and I worked at CrossFit Long Island City, which is sort of kind of where I, I started getting into, I guess, the more competitive aspect. Um, so I, I did regionals one year. I made it at 2012 and I placed like 24th. You know, granted things were very different then than they are now. So, um, but after that, I was kind of done with CrossFit and, and Olympic weightlifting. That kind of stuck out to me. I think for so many people who transitioned into weightlifting, from CrossFit have that same thing like oh man this is such an awesome thing um so I started just kind of teaching myself watching videos and then I did some training with Greg Everett I flew out to California and did some seminars with him and well actually one seminar but then he did some coaching for me actually and then I worked with Frankie Murray from Garden City I don't really know where he's at right now and then um I had some good success with some local competitions. I qualified for some national events. I went to one. I had an injury for another. And then that was kind of it. My back started to go when I got, I turned 30, uh, threw my back out real bad. And ever since then, I've just been kind of enjoying the lifting a little bit and more or less, less pressure, no comp- uh, competing there and doing more endurance stuff, running, biking. And that's, that's pretty much where I'm at right now. Is just your back still all banged up? Yeah, my back's not the greatest ever since I don't really do anything that loads my spine up. So I don't really compress my spine too much. Um, I kind of know what aggravates it. And that is usually like anything heavy that's sitting on my traps the next day. My, my back doesn't feel great. I've got a bunch of uh, some disc issues. But again, like running, biking, I feel fine. I don't really let it define my my activity. I'm just smart about it. Yeah. Well, do you think that it was more from the excessive fitness and just beating the crap out of yourself? Or was it one thing in particular, just overdoing something in one way? I definitely was overtraining. I was uh, definitely on the mindset more is better. So I was doing Olympic lifting and a ton of CrossFit stuff. I was working out with Dave a lot. We were just like super into it. And I just, I wasn't giving my body the time to recover. And I remember specifically, I did a workout with like some heavy deadlifts and some weighted GHDs. And that was definitely like the straw that broke the camel's back almost quite literally. And I went like my, uh, my BMO and my right leg shut down, like no, no, uh, nerve response to it for like three months. So it was really freaky. Um, like my leg would give out on me if I was walking or running or anything. I couldn't even run. My leg would just legit give out. I couldn't do a pistol. I couldn't put any weight on it. Um, it was super spooky. And, you know, after those three months, it came back. And, you know, I guess once the, the back started to heal a little bit more. But that was sort of it. Uh, definitely a lot of overtraining and uh, just being really excited about fitness in general. But, you know, getting caught in the moment, watching the games, seeing Dave. And, and I think at the time it was CrossFit Dynamics. And they were just like, it was super motivating, you yeah. know, and just trying to push it all, yeah. Yeah, Dave is an animal. I haven't talked to him in a long yeah. time. Um, where was I going with that? Yeah, so you're kind of like me. You're in the gym uh, 90 hours a week. So you're up at 4 a.m. and you don't leave the gym till 6. Um, how have, how's your training sort of like differed since now you're not doing as much heavy lifting? but you're still in the gym for 20 hours. I'll be completely honest. Uh, since I had my son, I've been in the gym much less. Um, but, you know, is this more like, would you want me to answer this before I've, I had my son? Because that, I guess that would be a little bit more about like the balance just because we don't have like, we don't really have any childcare right now, especially with COVID. So I right. try to be home as much as I can. Prior to that, you know, I would be up five in the morning again. I mean, let's just like go back before COVID, right? Just to give you like an idea of what I hope to become like a day to day for a little bit. Yeah, up four or five in the morning, here for the morning classes, slot out two hours, coach, take on some afternoon work, clients. I do a lot of a lot of my business comes from personal training too, um, and then kind of like chill out until five, and and then and then leave. And you know, as I've gotten older, I've definitely like lowered the volume on the heavy lifting. And again, I find that the endurance stuff is, is less uh, a 
progressive on, on how my recovery is. I feel better. Um, but I don't really allocate any more than 60 minutes to 90 minutes now. And that's it. Like that's my, I have to get it done. And even then sometimes it's 30 minutes, um, trying to make, you know, to a fault. I think that I let the business take, uh, second priority to my training for so many years because that was more of like what I was like oh I love working out I'm going to open a gym and I love helping people but I always have to work out and I think it definitely held my business back for a while and lately I say last few years I've sort of kind of flipped it I still obviously care about my health but I want to transition where I've transitioned more into how to make this place succeed how to make the community succeed um, and how to essentially just have a, a really healthy work life balance which is something that I think I, I was missing with those 90 hour work weeks, especially since I got married. So it's hard, right? It's, it's, it's not, it's not sustainable. Yeah. Right? Something has to give, right? So either the relationship at home suffers or, you know, the work suffers, but it shouldn't be that way. Right. There should be a happy medium. Well, I think in the beginning stages, you have to be married to the business. It has to be the Absolutely. forefront. And, yeah. and that's like the same thing when you're married to, another person like you have to be in it for uh, the first few years and you have to be completely on top of that because if you're not obviously everything's going to go wrong and you're not going to pay attention right. to it. so once things settle down it obviously can sustain itself but you know you guys could become comfortable with one another the business becomes comfortable growing in its own way and i think that's kind of yes. where you're at with uh, at eight years which is an awesome feat you know it's not easy being in the gym industry especially today and, you know, I was sleeping on the floors when we first opened. So it's just like, it's, yeah. you got to do it. You got to put in the work if yeah. you want it to go somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. I would, I would put up, uh, I brought a mattress. I would sleep on the floor. That's it. Yeah, man. And uh, I think a lot of people make mistakes thinking that opening a gym, oh, I love working out. I'm going to open a gym. It's going to be awesome. And they think they're going to make all this money. And it's, it's not so easy. <laughs> no. And, you know, and I think to that point, you know, it's tough because the people that don't necessarily have the best product but know how to do business very well succeed tremendously. Yeah. And, you know, there's a lot of a lot of data on this that it's really not what you're selling, it's how you're selling it. Um, and then I also think that a lot of that comes into play with how a person wants to conduct their business. There's a lot of things in marketing that I just don't like doing um, because I just think it's corny even though I know it works. And it's always this battle. It's like, okay, I can do these things and be more successful financially, but it sort of works against my values as how I want to run my business and the kind of clientele that I want in my business and the kind of um, integrity, so to speak, of, of movements and uh, quality that I can maintain. And it's tough because there is definitely times where I'm like, man, I look at some competitors and, and, and I don't really get caught up in it, but I'm like, man, I just did some more marketing and X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z hired a person for this, for that. You know, I could increase revenue 10, 20%, et cetera. But I'm like, well then what would my gym become? What would my community become? All right. And it's tough. I don't necessarily know uh, the right answer for it at times. Yeah. So I, I have a similar struggle and I have a question. So a, a big issue that I have is that I'm here all the time and a lot of our members and I, we're just basically friends that hang out and work out all the time. So like, the business friend relationship is sort of like it's, it's walking that line. So I have an issue, uh, not an issue, but it's it's definitely a flaw in the business model. Or it's like, you know, somebody walks in, you're basically their friend and you let them not let them get away with certain things. But it is like they they're more home. It's more like this is their home also, as opposed to this is the place where they come to work out and train. This is now like their second home. And it's you're all all part of a little family. So. Like you yeah. said, if you give that up to somebody else, then it becomes more business and corporate and it doesn't feel the same. So that's the kind of the struggle that I deal with, which it's, it is what it is. I think that's, you know, to that point, I think that that was something that was super detrimental to me after five years, let's just say arbitrarily five or six years. The first few years, I think that was super important because it essentially like you brought your family up together. And my former business partner, uh, Mike, you know, same thing, like we were just buddy, buddy with everybody and, you know, people were like, hey, can I do this instead of coming to class? Can I do this? Can I do this? You know, and you start making exceptions for a lot of people because you're friends and in a sense, then you have chaos in some in some weird way. Right. 
and you don't have like a steady flow. And then when you want to make decisions, it's, it's very hard to give and then take away. Right. right. Ultimately, what I found was that, I guess I had these good relationships with pretty much everyone and it led to a really strong community. But when I wanted to make business changes that I think would enhance the entirety of the gym, people that weren't used to it, there was a lot of pushback. There was some falling out, right? Uh, relationships ended because of there was too much closeness. And then when business became business, it didn't end well. Um, and I think changing that to some degree is super important and was very liberating for me um, because I did have to take a step back and be like, look, this is what it is. If this isn't working for you. You know, I really value our relationship, but this is my business in the end and this is where it has to go. Um, and I would love for you to stay, but again, if this is not what you want, then this is not the place for you to do. And you lose some people, but ultimately, if you believe that it's the right thing and it'll serve your business and everyone else as a whole, I think it's something that you kind of have to stick to your guns. But to your point, the more, the less of a, a boundary you have, the harder those things become. It becomes yeah. really, really hard. Yep. And I even made those mistakes with some coaches too. It's like way too close, right? Way too close. Um, and it makes everything a little bit trickier. Yeah. Well, yeah, we're all trying to just figure it all out. So, oh yeah, yeah. Is, yeah. It's just always it's, it's that constant struggle of just owning a business. You know, you want to be friendly, yep. but you want to be in charge at the same time, and it's it's tough. Especially a CrossFit gym. Yeah, I and mean, that's where our, our bread and butter is community. It's the people. So, how did uh, how were you affected by COVID and all the shutdowns? Did you lose a lot of people? Were you able to go online a little bit more during the shutdown? Uh, pretty terribly, I'll be honest. So, yep. um, I got lucky in the beginning. So, well, let's put it this way. The community has been really awesome, all right? So, enough people kept their memberships and I leased out equipment that I was able to cover rent and, you know, health insurance and expenses, etc. Also, the first three months, there was someone on our block. He was, uh, he makes gin and he capitalized on the situation, if you will, or, you know, just switched to hand sanitizer. He was making so much hand sanitizer that he had rent out extra spaces. So he rented our gym out for, uh, for three months at the same time that I leased all the equipment out. And then once that was over, I, you know, I, and, uh, well, I forgot when we were allowed to open up back in September. So the equipment came back then. Um, and we started our outdoor classes, you know, but over time, you know, in the beginning when people were keeping their memberships, this wasn't like people weren't thinking this is going to be a year. And over time, people start to hurt financially, too. And these are luxuries that typically are hard to keep. So at this point in time, I would say we're down about 60 percent membership. Um, very few signups. People are still typically very scared. That's usually the, the pushback I get. It's just a lot of questions about the safety of indoor training, um, even with the low statistics of, of the spread. Um, I, you know, I've gone through all the measures we have this like crazy hvac thing i have ventilation built into the walls we have 15 high ceilings we have good airflow we haven't had anything happen here um since we've been open so it's been tough we did transition to online a little bit but again like i have and my other coaches like we're so personality oriented that it's tough to, to, to bring that through the uh, through the internet um and i know some people can do really well with that and I just think our dynamic here is definitely like our in-person, face-to-face, joking around, here's my energy. And I think that was definitely a detriment to how we conduct ourselves online. Um, and it worked for a little while. But at this point, we have a limited schedule. And I'm making I'm making ends meet. Um, first, a lot of people have switched to personal training, which has been good because they feel safer doing it. And we're kind of just, you know, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that we make it to the end of the summer and, and you know once we get back outside and things are smoothing out with the vaccine that you know this will kind of just be like another conversation that people have remember when there was covid you know that's what i'm hoping yeah man i, I hope for the best man it sucks because yeah. everybody had to shut down you had to sort of become a speakeasy for fitness and it's like yep. at this time, the best thing anybody can do for themselves is be healthy and be active, and we're completely shut down. And if you're like me, you don't like working out at home because it's not comfortable, it's not fun. Like you and I, we built a gym for what we wanted to do with it, 
and what we wanted yeah. other people to feel when they come in this place. So when you're home sitting in front of a computer screen with a rug, it's not the same feeling. It's not the same environment. No. You, it's, it's, it's tough. It's tough. Yeah. yeah. Um, but definitely like un unprecedented times, definitely a lot of, a lot of crazy stuff, especially, you know, with the craziness of, of, of politics, the craziness of COVID, just a lot of things going on that are affecting people physically and mentally. And it's just been such a wild, wicked year that I think, you know, any business that can make it through now, even if they're hurting, they're going to be so much stronger in the long run. And just to like hold out, you just got to hold on as much as you can. Yeah, I mean, for I'll sure. I'll be honest. I thought a few times of shutting down, and for like a very emotional it would have been a very emotional decision. Yeah, you know. And it's thinking about it now. I'm so glad I didn't. And if I do shut down, it'll be because I have to, not because you know. Um, I'm frustrated, if you will. Right. right. Yeah, I mean, I hope you end it on your terms and not anybody else's. Yeah. That's the goal for all of us. Um, any advice you have for people who are thinking about opening a gym in 2021? Look, I mean, if someone's <laughs> thinking about opening up a gym in 2021 and, you know, I would imagine that they understand what's going on right now. And, um, and if assuming they've accounted for it, just to know it's going to be hard work, make sure you know what your product is. Absolutely know what you're selling and what your vision is. You have a vision and you have a specific, clear cut vision, not just like, oh, I'm opening a gym, people are going to come and it's going to be amazing and fun, right? I mean, it has to be like, it's business, right? Especially CrossFit. You know, I think CrossFit, again, I'll be honest, I've been a little out of the CrossFit loop the last few years, but it's such a, it's such a high when you take that class. It's such a novelty hanging out with the people. I mean, I don't have to tell you that people get super excited and think, this is what I'm going to do. Just like you said earlier, I'm going to make all this money. People are going to work out all day. It's like, be clear. I'm very clear that you're going to be putting in a tremendous amount of work. And for the most part, you're not going to be seeing very much money in the beginning. And if it's something that truly brings you happiness, then that's awesome. And do it. You'll eventually succeed. Whether you'll retire off of that, probably not. Right. <laughs> you know, Jason, Jason Kalipa over in California is doing quite well with his, uh, his branding. And there's a few other people that are doing fucking awesome. But again, I think for the most part, we're just, you know, small, small gyms, small business owners who are, you know, in it for very similar reasons. But I don't think uh, retirement was our underlying driving force here. I think it was more like having some financial freedom and doing things that truly brought us happiness. I know that's why I got into it. So, yeah, for sure. Definitely bought myself just, a job. Yeah. A job that I know wanted. Know your product and know your vision. Yeah. Yeah. All right, brother. Well, you're welcome to come out here anytime. Come and lift awesome. with me. Likewise. Come and do some bike work with me, whatever you want to do. Awesome. And uh, if That's I'm ever good, in town, I'll make sure to swing by. Yeah, do it. And uh, let me know if you ever want to talk again. I hope this was uh, kind of what you had planned. I didn't really know uh, what the questions were going to be all about. but Yeah, it's awesome. It. I, just, I just like talking to you. It's a gym owner, gym owner, friends, friends. We haven't seen each other in a while, so it's good. Yeah, man. Definitely good to see you. And I know that you are late, but congrats on the, on the boy. Thanks, man. You too. Yeah. Thanks, dude. All right, brother. All right, man. All right, guys. Uh, if you're ever in right. Greenpoint, go visit Ron Yellen at Greenpoint Athletics. Uh, hit that subscribe button on the YouTube page and subscribe to CrossFit Dark Athletics. We got podcasts. We got challenges. Maybe we'll get Ron out here for a challenge one day. And uh, we'll see you next time for the next one. Age is inevitable. Right. Weakness is not. We'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Later, man. Bye. Thanks for watching today's Marblecast. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any content. Check out our Spreadshirt shop to grab some swag. And if you would like to support the Marblecast, please head over to anchor.fm. All of the links are in the description, and it helps us out to keep the channel running. Thanks so much, guys. See you next time.